I wanted to talk about a subject today that has been around for a fair while. Um, a lot of people are aware of it. But I don't think they're understanding just how far mind control goes these days. We can look at the mainstream media and all the other obvious aspects and know that these are mind control aspects. But I'm going to share with you very briefly um, a story well, my experience. Now, before I do, I'm just going to quickly tell you, I'm, I was born in Tasmania. I left home when I was 19, lived around Tasmania and worked there until I went to Melbourne, just after I was 21. Lived and worked there, then I went all the way on the train over to Western Australia. Lived and worked there, Went to Kalgoorlie, lived and worked there. Then I went all the way up the west coast of Australia, up to Darwin, lived and worked there. Then went all the way down, drove all the way down through the middle, lived up the north of Tasmania for a few years. Then went back to Queensland. By that time I was uh, in a relationship and... Queensland was his home state so went to various places in Queensland and lived there for the bulk of that time until I ended up in New South Wales a few years ago and then back in Tasmania where I am now. So over the last half a century I've been to so many places all and around Australia. I've experienced different communities, different mindsets. Even when you go to the Western Australia there's this disconnectedness from the east coast of Australia. Not only is there a time difference, but because of the distance, and you've just travelled days and days to get from one side of the country through a desert that is so boring that you wished you could sleep through it and wake up two days later, but you can't. Uh, it, it's really boring. And it's all desert. And most of that desert has mines scattered all throughout. So that's just um, Australia, where I've been. I've been all round. And yes, all through uh, in when I've been living in different places, I've done the tourist thing, gone inland. I've been all the way to Canberra, through up to the snow fields. And I've been to the... Well, I lived out at Emerald in the Goldfields area. I've lived up at Mackay. Um, it's, I've lived in a lot of different places from coast to remote, a lot of mining towns because that's what my husband was then involved in. So, but I ended up in New South Wales in this area about five years ago. A change of lifestyle. I had teenage kids and I wanted to become self-sufficient and I knew that in this area there were a lot of self-sufficient communities and I wanted to join in. Now I'm giving you an overview because I'm only going to try and focus on one particular incident here because it's related to a much much bigger thing that is still in play now and I do believe it's actually affecting people in a real way today even online on YouTube and places like that um, and it's funny that the the reason that I started uploading in the first place seems to be the reason that well this has been bothering me for for ever since I started uploading anyway because there's been things that, um, I don't look for them, these contradictions that just show out to me. And it's like, um, you've once you've seen it, you can't not unsee it, and you've got to find out, well, why does that contradiction exist? So, in some ways, I've been cursed with this my life, because these little things nag at me and then another little thing will come along until I've got all these little things it's like come on 
isn't your instinct telling you by now that all these things add up to something and I'm trying to project what I want to perceive rather than what reality is. So I've got to give up on this ideal of what I want the situation to be and accept it for what it is. So um, when I wound up in this community in Chowan Creek, this area over here, this big round thing is called Mount Warning or Wollumbin as the original people call it. Uh, it was a super volcano billions of years ago. My theory is that it was probably largely responsible for forming the large part of Australia's east coastline and the mountainous regions all the way down to probably here in Tasmania too. And when it collapsed, it probably caused a major split. It was a super volcano. It was a massive area. So you have to imagine that even the area I'm showing you now, what's left of it, it encompassed a much larger area. But these um, mountain regions through here are beautiful. It's it's lovely area. It was ideal. It's where I wanted to be. And in a situation where I wanted to create um, self-sustainability and these people had offered it to me. So I ended up at this property called Ganyawe out at Chowan Creek Road. I'm not going to get too much into it because um, at the time I was in a tent with my teenage kids and someone had offered a garage we could s stay in and be part of this community that was growing so I jumped at the opportunity. It wasn't what it was made out to be but uh, that's another story. This one I just want to focus on and why I'm zooming in here is because this is the house that I'm going to be talking about where it happened. This is Ganyawe. As you can see it's a beautiful setting and the boys that had set up this place there were um, three of them they're all relatives and um, there's a big beautiful river there after I had a fallout with the guys I went up and tented I thought they were going to leave me alone but no see one thing I was to find out that my ideal of communities and what they were um, I was to find out that uh, yeah, reality bites. In fact, a lot of these communities are more dictator, more dictatorial than your own government, and yet they're so anti-government. But as I said, I'm going to try and focus on the one story. So, in this beautiful little area, uh, I'd moved into the garage uh, myself and my two teenage kids. And there was one other occupant there that we had to share with. He slept about a metre from me. Now this guy kind of reminds you of um, Gollum out of Lord of the Rings. He's kind of got that vibe about him. And yet everybody thought he was great. And it's like, oh, whatever. When I moved there, I thought I was moving to people that were like-minded. I didn't realise I was moving in with a bunch of idiots and I was going to be the sanest person in the nuthouse. But um, I'll just focus on this one guy that I shared the garage with. Because uh, the story that came out of him one day, I could not have anticipated or expected and it just blew my mind. And it, it didn't surprise me because before I'd moved to this com community, um, I'm already aware and awake of what's going on in the, the world. I've heard of super soldiers, I know about MK Ultra, and as far as I looked at it and understood it, I also understood that these super soldiers were coming out as clear psyops, all of them. You know, they wanted us to know that there were control mechanisms. Now, they were all coming out with these dramatic stories. And yet all of them were saying, oh, I'm free of it now, but, oh, I can't tell you that. I'm not allowed to tell you. Well, why aren't you allowed to tell? Because they're still um, carrying on with the MK Ultra programming. 
when they come out as super soldiers, that's exactly the program they're following. They're supposed to be doing that. They're supposed to be making this kind of activity aware to the public. And this is where the controlled release of information and the controlled narrative around it comes in. I could see all that. So I accepted it for what it was. And I didn't think that it would be so embedded into our society that, well, this was all happening in America, not in Australia. I didn't expect to move to the country and to have something like that right in my face challenging me with, well, you thought it wasn't here in Australia and it couldn't couldn't really exist as and here I was about to find it. I mean it was a contradiction in my own mind because the super soldiers coming out in the first place was always a planned psyop. As I say we need to know that these control mechanisms in place and while everyone's focusing on the super soldiers and what they're saying they're controlling that narrative. They're not thinking for themselves and they're believing what the super soldiers are telling them. Now, these are brainwashed people that say, now I'm not brainwashed and believe what I'm telling you because now I'm not brainwashed. But I can't tell you some things because I'm not allowed to. Oh, come on, why can't you tell me? If you're not brainwashed, why can't they tell you? Because that's part of the program. You're not supposed to know that there's a program called the Super Soldier Whistleblower that controls the narrative. They're going to tell you the programs they want you to be able to see and recognise. So you could say that I'm a fairly big sceptic and, and cynic when it comes to this. So when I experienced it, I wasn't, I wasn't naive to it. I did know it was real, but I didn't expect to experience it myself. So this guy I shared the garage with, I did not trust one iota. I mean, if you could um, register instinct tings, my body was constantly going off. It was, you know, there was just something wrong with this guy. And what is wrong with the rest of the idiots around me? Can't they figure out that this guy's, you know, this something really this guy bothered me and he knew it too and he tried so hard to win my approval because I would call him out on his bullshit and he would carry on and I mean I woke up the kids would wake up and he'd be going through our things he did end up stealing things off me and uh, but that's part of the story I'll get into so what happened one morning uh, it was only him and me, we were sitting out on the veranda and because of this tension that had been between us where he knew I wasn't buying his bullshit and any time he opened his mouth I'd just give him that look as if to say what, are you going to start again? Because I don't want to have to call you out, it's too early in the morning. But I wasn't prepared for what he was about to say to me. I really wasn't. He turned around and he said, you're one of them. And I said, what? You're one of them, aren't you? You're one of them. I couldn't figure out what he was talking about. He did start ranting and rambling and I was picking up on a few words as he was doing that, but my mind was spinning out because uh, why I was spinning out because when he he was sitting there and it was almost like you could see this switch and that's when he went you're one of them and now I've had a, a few years to think about this and it's not that I've thought about it often because when I this situation ended I wanted to put it behind me I didn't really want to I wanted a little bit of normalcy. I didn't want to live in a world where there were people like that. And um, so when he, when he got triggered and he said, you're one of them, what I believe he thought was that I was one of his handlers or maybe um, an inspector, some kind of handler in that way that comes in to see whether that operative 
is doing their job properly because he thought I was in that position of where you'd expect to find um, someone training an MK Ultra operative, the handler type person. He thought I was in that position of authority. And because once that trigger, and he thought that, he just opened straight up about all this stuff. And it started to blow my mind away what he was telling me because I was actually starting to understand why I was feeling the way that I was and why all my instincts were warning me about him. Now what he told me is that for many, many years there's been uh, programs run in Australia with a group of men that have an eight-week training course with a guy, um, I'm just looking at the notes I wrote years ago after this happened, a guy called Paul who um, did remote viewing. Now, you have to understand that I haven't talked to this guy about any of this stuff or any of these people about any of this stuff because um, they're not like the hippies I used to know, they're flakes, all right? But <laughs> Yeah, I won't go into that story anyway. So there were certain subjects that I'm never even going to bring up with these people because they haven't got the capacity to understand or even intellectually go there. So when he started coming out with all this stuff, it wasn't like he'd heard it come from me or anyone there that he could have said it. It was just purely him volunteering this information to me. Now, whether this information is true... I don't know, but I'm about to share with you what he told me. So he, overall, what was going on, that he, every two years, they move that individual around. What they do is that they send in um, a group of uh, MK Ultras to targeted communities within the larger area. Now, within this larger area, there are hundreds and hundreds of different communities, all trying to be self-autonomous in their own mindset, in their own way. And over the last 20 years, all of these groups have been infiltrated by these MK Ultra operatives. And so that they don't get, um, you know, they entrench themselves, ingratiate themselves into the community, become major players, and then they'll just move on before it all comes back in their face. And in this particular individual's case, because uh, I'm going to put in a clip of it, a few clips of him at the end. He puts his own videos up uh, so you can see what kind of an individual he's actually become. When I encountered him, there was a relative uh, normalcy that about him that he could maintain but it wasn't really completely normal. But overall, he spent the last 20 years in and out of training um, because the old MK Ultra techniques they use clearly on these older generation ones, because this guy, um, I think he's in his 60s now, and uh, you've got to look at old men in their 60s trying to control a narrative now because, um, yeah, there was another individual that I encountered that I know for sure was actually part of it as well. So I know there were two individuals that um, were infiltrating particular communities, not only to monitor them and to report back what was going on, but to also um, try and manipulate certain scenarios. Like there were certain um, things that failed in the house, little things, you know, like that shouldn't have happened and nobody could explain them. And that's just come to my head now because this guy, Hamo, probably, probably sabotaged them. But he told me that for the last 20 years there's been a group of men going around all these different community communities infiltrating them entrenching themselves reporting back and then they get pulled out after two years now why two years as he explained to me 
is because it seems to be that because of the old techniques that they were they used on them, and I don't know, maybe it's because of the mind, uh, the damage that they caused and how they had to continue down a certain line, but apparently the programming breaks down at the end of two years. So it's not only a matter of retrieving your MK Ultra subject and moving them on to the next one. It's also a matter of retraining them because the programming is breaking down. Now this is all what this guy is telling me. This is not something that I have made up myself. So as you can, he spoke to me for a good hour or so and all the different things he was telling me. So he told me that his name was the Jester. Now there was another man that came round and visited. His name was Frank, and I, I know his last name, I couldn't even remember it, but it's better not to use them anyway. So we'll just say Frank. Frank too was a bit of an odd board. I didn't see him very often. And when he did show up, um, it was like, it, again, he was really nice to everybody and everybody loved him and, you know, oh, here comes Frank. Oh, look, he's bought food for us again too. Oh, isn't he a lo nice guy? And he pulls out his banjo and he starts having a play. And yes, that's also another element here. It seems to be part of the encompassing thing that they play some kind of an instrument because it breaks the boundaries between human beings. Much like if you had a dog and you're walking down the street and people come up and say hello to your dog, not you. It breaks the boundaries. So it's, it's a very good way to infiltrate a community. And ironically, <laughs> this whole community is a music-based community. And a little bit further back down the road towards Yukai, they've got actually got a sound studio set up where they do recordings. Now, mind you, the music that I listen to, I couldn't even call it music, but... Um, I'm not even going to go into music taste right now. So this guy had told me that there was not only himself, and this guy, Alan, was uh, waiting for his handler, Paul, to come get him because um, he needed to go back in for his eight weeks training before he went out to another community. And he told me that Frank was also one of them, and you see, this is why he's telling me, because he started the whole thing off by saying, you're one of them. And something clicked inside of him. And this is why he came out with them. Because he thought I was an MK Ultra. He, he, and m maybe there's a trigger inside of the MK Ultras that if they perceive that they've encountered another MK Ultra, that they reveal themselves to them. And what's going on? I don't know. I really don't know why this guy told me all this stuff, but uh, I'm inclined to believe a lot of it after what I experienced there. So this guy, Alan, referred to himself, his name is the Jester. There's Frank, who's the Birdman. Now he mentioned a guy called Chris, but I don't know Chris, I never saw him. Now Frank actually lived in the uh, National Park. He had already lived there for six years, I think. He was squatting in his car, and I think it's after seven years. If you've been squatting somewhere, you can claim squatter's rights. That's what he was going for. So he was in the National Park squatting for six years, but he would go round to all these different communities. He was known to all these different communities. And so he, I suppose he could have been the coordinator because after all this happened, Frank did come and visit a couple more times after that. And because I, um, Alan had mentioned Frank the Birdman and actually made sure I understood it was that Frank, when he showed up again and Alan disappeared with him, I thought, wow, okay, there might be something to this because I, I didn't trust this Frank guy either. I don't trust people that are too nice. Um, my dad was an alcoholic. He was a, a con man. 
and I'm sorry, but I can pick up a con. Um, maybe that's why I was uh, having my alarm bells go off all the time around this guy because he wasn't being honest. He was a con, an MK Ultra. And this guy, Frank, that had come round to visit, he was too. So there was Alan, Frank the Birdman, Chris, he never gave me a code na name for him. He mentioned, all right, I won't say Brett's last name, a guy called Brett the Spider. And then he referred to the Paul, this guy Paul, who is his trainer who comes in and does the eight weeks training with them and sends them on their way to different things after that. And he explained to me that it was because his programming was breaking down. Now, I'm intending to believe this because in the time that I'm talking to him and in between him saying all of this, um, there was all these other things that would just come out of left field that he would talk about, these um, dreams and visions and uh, how he was, you know, talking to angels and, I mean... It, Bizarre. I'm not going to go too much into his bizarre stories because the clips I put at the end, you might be able to imagine for yourself what kind of stuff he could come up with. So he also said that the Quakers at Bentley had also been infiltrated by them. So I'm just trying to um, give an overview here of this mind-blowing situation. It's the first time I've talked about it to um, anyone that didn't actually experience it. I just wanted to let people know that this was an experience that I had and it blew my mind away to think that there was a group of trained MK Ultra men going throughout the alternative uh, lifestyle communities, infiltrating them all, reporting back on them and manipulating them. And these individuals that are in this group are of a particular age group. They are not young MK Ultra super soldiers. They are not what you've seen on YouTube. Well, you have seen them on YouTube, but you just don't recognize them for what they are. And the funny thing is that one I've actually heard say that they know they've been affected by this and that person did experience what I believe this guy experienced that day a breakdown in the MK Ultra programming and he needed to be taken back in for his eight weeks of retraining and the sad thing is that a lot of the information that is coming out of individuals like this and even the benefit that they give to these communities with the information they do provide is valuable. But it's the other side of things that I just wanted to make people aware of. Some things you need to take with a grain of salt and you need to not be drawn up, dragged up into the passions of others. I'm guilty of it. I started uploading on this channel because I was triggered. I realised that and the reason I'm doing this video is because what was triggered in me was something was wrong. And so I monitored the situation even more closely. And I can say that I have monitored it. I did not become aware of it until a couple of months ago. I didn't even know this person existed. But when I did find out, it wasn't even a connection that I made then. It was only after observing and listening to so much that I bit that uh, I noticed little things. 
and then one day something was said and this experience has been in my mind ever since. Now rather than set about to prove that I was right and this person was wrong, I actually tried to prove myself wrong. That I was overreacting, that I was, you know, reading more into it than what there was. And so I've set about to try and prove myself wrong so I can say, right, get that stuff out of your head. There's nothing, no reason to have it nagging at you. There's no reason your instincts are telling you that something's not quite right here. So in the thing of, you know, how you keep your friends close and your enemies even closer, I have made a lot of observations and I've done a lot of research and digging around and I've questioned whether I'm biased, whether I'm actually trying to connect these two things together. And I've really tried to debunk myself in what I'm thinking. But the more I look at it, the more I realise that, well, it's like so many things, I'm proving it more to myself, not debunking it. So, as I said, I want to get really in-depth to this. It's, it's not a very easy thing to talk about, to try and explain it in the way that people can understand. And it's something that I experienced, and even if I tried to tell you in a time flow manner of how I experienced it, a lot of people are still going to struggle to understand with what I went through, what I saw, and what I heard. But I just want people, especially people in Australia, to realise that where I stayed in that community in Chowan Creek, it's a lovely area. I wished I was still there. That it's part of a larger community. Oops, let's see, can I bring it in so, yeah, there's Byron. It's part of a larger community and an alternative community. If you look around that whole mountain range, all around here, there's hundreds and hundreds of alternative communities and it covers well I should have showed you all the way around here because it's this whole area now this whole area is northern New South Wales and just over the border is southern Queensland where someone moved from Byron Bay in northern New South Wales over the border into Queensland into southeast Queensland or South Queensland but not North Queensland that's way up where the crocs and the stingers are and that's why most people live uh, lower uh, down in Australia you get up past a certain point your blue bottle stingers turn into man of war stingers and it turns into a real life and death situation and you've got crocs yeah, uh, your waters are not safe. I mean, you want to jump in the water and swim to cool off, but you can't because there's too many things in there that can hurt you and kill you. So the communities and uh, are further down the latitude that they're not so up in the tropics. So it's just... I watched something yesterday and these people in England kept saying that this person was in North Queensland. It's like, no, they were in northern New South Wales and they went to South Queensland. And the interesting thing was that mistake wasn't corrected, which I would correct. It's like, no, it's not North Qu Queensland. I don't live there. That's too bloody hot. I'm not going up there. And I've lived up North Queensland it, it, and I've lived in the Northern Territory. It's very stressful on the body. You go through the silly season in... Um, the Northern Territory where it thins your blood down. And there's going to be one clip that I'm going to show you where uh, and I'm going to show you the one where too where he says he he's about to disappear because this is what these um, trained ultra program people are, uh, MK ultra program people are trained to do. They're, they go in for a couple of years and then they move on and as 
this guy explained to me, it's because their programming starts to break down. The old method, and I suppose the brain damage that they did to them in the first place, they had to keep on with this old method. They couldn't change it up any. So they have to just keep bringing them in every couple of years, taking them through the retraining and putting them in that mindset and sending them off to another one. But he's the one that told me all this because he thought I was one of them. And, well, I couldn't be further from one of them. I couldn't even convince people if I, if I wasn't or I was. I mean, because half of these people don't even know. It's only when they get to the end of their breakdown, um, their programming, like this guy did, where... Um, there's that glitch in the personality where the personality is not the full-on thing that's presented there's this part of the programming that's coming in that's saying all right it's breaking down you need to follow this procedure because he had told me that he had called his trainer and asked him to come and get him and he was waiting for him to come get him and they for it to go for his retraining now what the remote viewing had to do with this um, Paul guy, I don't know, but he did tell me that this Paul guy was very psychic and uh, yeah, there were, were lots of different things I, I can't remember a lot of what he said because you have to understand a lot of what he said came in between a lot of crazy he's telling one story about a, a dream and, and an angel and all this other stuff and then the next thing that'll just stop and you'll go straight into something else and that'll be a little bite of that and then you'll go back into into something else yeah. so it was hard to follow and piece together I wished I'd, I had it all recorded and was able to go back and listen to it over and over again because I'm sure I lost so much information he was telling me I mean, afterwards I went away and um, let's just say that the experience then is actually doing to, to me what it uh, did then, what it's doing to me now. Even just talking about this experience, I've got the body shakes up a bit because there was something going on that really alerted it, it wasn't right. It just really wasn't right something didn't fit into the natural scheme of things. Now, I can tell you all of this, my experience, and what I went through, and what I believe. You don't have to believe it. But if there is any truth in it, you need to wonder about those that might be controlling a narrative on the alternative side of things and not even be aware that they're controlling it. Now, if there hadn't have been... When I first discovered this individual, I had not been aware of the fact that earlier this year he had a meltdown. And the things that I heard that uh, he said himself during that meltdown... connected everything back to this MK Ultra programming. These men of certain ages going around these communities, alternative lifestylers, and you know what? They don't pay taxes, they don't earn wages, and they have a musical instrument. They don't pay rent, and they might say that there is an exchange of energies but they're freeloaders and most of the time it suits that two years is long enough that they're freeloaded and that community's probably starting to get a little bit pissed off with them because you know what there was some benefit to them in the first place because they were offering new insights and information but now they're not contributing anything new they're not doing anything for the community and they're not even helping to contribute to its financial upkeep so ultimately, you know, they're ready to kick you out. They get out before that happens. And when this guy did leave, which I believe he was picked up by his trainer, Paul, this Paul guy, 
I didn't have to share the garage with him anymore, but he also made sure that I didn't have to have possession of a certain amount of my identity documents. And he stole my mum's jewellery. I mean, the only value in the jewellery was sentimental. I actually had it on me because I didn't want to leave it in the container that I had left in Queensland because I didn't want it stolen. And this bastard stole it on me. And identifying documents. Because uh, I dare say he, um, well, whoever his handlers or trainers are, they know who I am. But I'm nobody. I'm nobody to worry about because nobody listens to me. They never have. And that's why they don't need to do anything to me. Mind you, there have been oh, experiences that I've had in the past but then I've had them my whole lifetime and they weren't connected to this. But then maybe they were because if... Uh, if I hadn't been through this experience, I wouldn't be able to, to look at what I looked at last night and go, hang on, look, no, this, something's just actually happened here. And I'm sorry, but um, it comes back to this thing where we've got certain theories about what the earth looks like I couldn't believe it when I heard there was people that believed the earth was flat and I found out there were people that believed the earth was concave and I had a little bit of a look into it and I just thought you know what this is just another MK Ultra program running a distraction and I'm not going to let it waste my time but it's grown, you know, it's got legs and it's running and s what would appear to be seemingly intelligent people are talking about it. Now, talking about it actually gives it credence. And even now saying it, I'm not giving it any credence because I'm not. But I'm using it as what they have as part of their MK Ultra programming, this flat earth stuff. Now, not all flat earthers are um, MK Ultra. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that there are certain ones controlling the narrative and probably even started the flat earth theory that um, are MK Ultra controlled. And they're controlling the narrative and the opposition, and it distracts a lot of people. I mean, with a useless topic. I mean,. In so many ways, I agree with the counter-argument. Does it matter? I thought we decided the Earth was round and it was a globe. I look at the moon, it's round. I look at the sun, it's round. You know, I think we kind of understand that a spinning object needs to be round. But then again, I suppose we're not spinning in the universe. We're just sitting in the middle of nowhere with nothing outside of us inside this dome. Now, that's the most extent to that fairy tale I'm going to give credence to. And if anyone is a flat earther that's listening to this and you go, huh, I'm insulted, I'm insulted you actually think this, this shit, all right? So don't bother coming back at me with this, I should buy your belief. I'm not even going to give it. I'll tell you where to go. I will. I'm not going to take your bullshit. It is bullshit. It is part of MK Ultra programming. So are musical instruments. So are infiltrating the alternative community. So is not having a job. So is freeloading. So is saying that, you know, I'm spiritual and, you know, it's about giving to others and it's about mutually giving and receiving. Well, let me tell you something about these communities. It's not about giving and receiving. Oh, on the surface it is, there's all this fluff and talk about it. But the only interest they have in you is if you can contribute money. And if you can't con contribute money, they don't want you around. So the only reason that these freeloaders are kept around in these communities is because they bring in people that bring in the money. Okay? It's... I'm getting excited. I don't want to get excited because this is how people lose me when they get all angry about something and not rational. 
because when you get angry you're not thinking clearly and you say things that are half-truths and merely exaggerations to try and make your point and I have seen enough behavior exhibited out of other people to know that you know what I am not going to go down that road and be passionate because that is also part of the programming what we need is calm and clear heads not anger not frustration and we need people that are not telling the same things over and over and over and over I might be a very fickle kind of person but once I've heard something I don't need it told to me a hundred times and I don't need to tell people a hundred times I'm going to say to you well look I'm not going to tell you again and especially if I've done a video on it I'm going to say look go back and watch the video because I'm not going to repeat myself that's kind of redundant and it is redundant to repeat yourself and having said that I've repeated myself so many times through here in trying to get this point across that there are people in Australia and I know there's quite a few of them and even in other countries that are listening to this individual this individual also says it's not about money that's why the channels not monetized but it is about money because there's always an opportunity to offer Bitcoin or Patreon or to support and donate these people I'm never going to ask for a single cent from you not a cent and I'm not going to ask you to believe anything that I say and when I say I'm doing this because I believe in it that's reality for me I'm doing this because I want other people to not be put in a situation that they've got no control over and look this guy that I've been watching for the last month or so uh, I agree with so much of what he's saying and doing and this is where it makes it hard to actually come out and say something like this because I will continue to listen to him but I also know that when I'm listening to him who he is and that's all I want you to consider who that person is and is it benefiting you to be hearing the same agitation every day like I know that when I get angry about something it really makes me feel good to listen to somebody else that's angry about the same thing but do you need that anger every day it's like when I had a dog that wouldn't do it as it was told and I was constantly having my good mood turned into a oh and I'm getting a sore throat because I can't yell so when I'm calling to the dog and telling it to behave and all of these things I'm getting angry and in the end I, I said to myself you know what this is going to be my last dog because I do not need to be put in that anger I want to have a more peaceful life I don't need to have a dog I don't need that in my life and as long as I have a dog that will always provide scenarios where I've got to control it uh, you know I've got to do all the different things that I really don't want to do and being a dog owner is kind of like being a slave owner and I don't like that they expect that you control your dog I like to have a mutual relationship with an animal and like I do with all other animals whether they're human or non-human a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with them I'm not here to be master or dictator to anyone I'm, I'm just me I want to live in this world I would have preferred to stay right where I was in those beautiful beautiful hills and a lovely climate the people well if you like flakes that talk about the same thing all the time you know if you like a status quo of being a constant victim and you know you're living the alternative uh, lifestyle in opposition to the the tyranny yeah 
It's not true freedom though. These communities around here, um, there's so many different ones. There's water people, there's a community that has um, sexual preferences requirements. Yes, if you are not of a particular sexual uh, persuasion or thought process, you can't come. So all of these communities have their own dictators that are saying these are the specific rules. And each of them, if you speak out against those rules, well, I spoke out against those rules. <laughs> I got kicked out. And, yeah, I got kicked out of the garage and I went and set my tent up. My kids stayed in the um, garage where they were. I mean, they're, they're older teenage kids. They're young adults and they're quite capable of looking after themselves and they had it to themselves at this stage. This, this Alan guy had gone. So I got kicked out and uh, after a long, long process of different places and confrontations, some of them I have a recording of that I intend to share of in the future, just to show you the kind of people and scenarios that I'm dealing with, well, that I dealt with, and that you are dealing with too. Now, I'm going to repeat myself again here, and it may be redundant because I've already said it, but before I finish it off, I just want people to know that Please consider if what I've said has any foundation to you. Is there someone that is pretty much telling you everything you want to hear, even acting the way that you want, and also ticking the boxes of the certain things that I've described that are classic? to an MK Ultra programmed person. And I bring this up because, and I made this video today because I, I was umming and ahhing and I still am umming and ahhing. But I'm gonna put, you know, it out there, whatever the consequences are. Because um, despite uh, the contradictions that I've seen, the one I heard last night that encouraged people to go and subscribe to a Flat Earthers channel. Um, it was kind of the last straw. People might go, well, that's nothing. As I said, it's a combination of many, 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 many factors. And I could point out many of them and I'm not going to do it in this video. I just wanted to tell people, especially in Australia, and well, anywhere, if you're listening, you need to look at the old MK Ultras, the ones that are running the programs I talked about, like this Alan Guy. They are going to be in their 60s, and they're not going to just be in America, as I thought. I found them in Australia. They're going to be in England and probably all over they're probably going to be in every country so look for them in your country but don't necessarily look for someone that's going to fit one particular profile either I'm talking about ones that have targeted the alternative communities in this northern New South Air northern New South Wales area. There are many other groups operating that target for other reasons. So how many are walking amongst us? How many of these, well, <laughs> just thinking of uh, Yuri Bezmanov's subversion video, where you implant someone, you know, for 20 years and then you put them into play and they're always in public, they're, they're high profile public people. <laughs> this is why I put out the video on subversion and I wanted people to, to consider that subversion is done more than just by, you know, governments to another, one government in a country to another country. 
government steward, individuals um, with a, a group mindset that have the desire to achieve something and the ability to achieve it. MK Ultra is one of those things that you need to consider is all part of that. Along with the mind control that comes with manipulating the narrative in the mainstream media, media there comes the MK Ultra mind control that is manipulating the narrative in the alternative media. And, well, when I first encountered Alex Jones, I mean, I listened to him only for the reason for what I've been monitoring certain things now is that straight from the word go there's something wrong about this guy and I listened to something with Alex Jones in it last night oh I can't handle his voice he talks like this oh sorry I sounded like um <laughs> one of those things the Dalek out of Doctor Who loved watching that show when I was a kid Anyway, MK Ultra comes in many different forms, not just super soldiers and media and entertainment, not just actors and not just well-known singers, but for sure certain things are used as a medium to uh, become popular with the masses. And also, don't underestimate sports. I have a very distinct view of sports, I always have, and after a few experiences I had when I was younger, I thought, you know what, you're nothing but a bunch of bad sports, this isn't fun, not, not, not going not gonna to play these games anymore, because it's all about competition. And my mum, when she got to her 60s, everyone in her tennis club's going through surgery, whether it's knees, elbows or hips, she was gearing up for a hip surgery that in the end would kill her. But most people, because they've played these sports and worn out their ankle joints, elbow joints and hip joints, they need them replacing. Now you have to understand that sports will wear out your joints quicker than what living a normal life will. So when you're encouraged to play sports to stay healthy, no, you are wearing your body out quickly and nobody gives a damn how crippled you're going to be in 10 years' time or could even be in 5 years' time because of how you've overexerted your body physically. Now, you watch someone on a tennis court or even playing netball, how they stop, start all the time and ankle joints, knee joints, hip joints, elbow joints wrist joints from swinging rackets all the time. I mean, all your joints are constantly getting worn down and that's why they need replacement. So it's not only MK Ultra in the music, the actors, government, media. You need to consider them in the sports arena too because the sports people are actors. Sports people are very self-consumed individuals. How many interviews do you see with sports people they say that I focused on me for the last five years everything was about me so I could get to the Olympics or I could do this and I got this done and everybody went out of their way to help me 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 and you're supposed to think oh wow all the sacrifices this person made they didn't make any sacrifices the, pe the people around them made all the sacrifices and carried their weight while they did for them. Me, 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 me. And why? Over something that's really important? No, I want to show people how good I am at something. I don't care how good you are at something. But I do care if what you think is going to start infecting other people with your stupid ideas. And the thing is that these people become celebrities just like anybody else. And the masses start to, to think and believe like them. And that's where they start controlling the narrative. So you're not watching the news, you're not believing the government, and you go to these alternative places and you go, yeah, I'm with this guy. No, you need to be with you and with all your fellow men or women. I'm going to use mankind as a generalisation. Or we're going to have to change that word because it's not politically correct. We're going to have to change it to person kind. 
I'm going to say mankind. Eh, sexist. Mankind. And I'm going to leave it on that note. Bye. Hello. <clears throat> Some people would be wondering why on earth am I dressed like this? Well, I've had the sad experience to finding out that empires don't like kings. Now these aren't pompous kings like you normally see in pompous places in empires. These are the meek, humble, original, first people kings who seem to get genocided and nobody wants to talk about them. And when you do, you have problems. I could mention the last king of king of kings. Now I said that with both two capital with small capital K's, if you understand what I'm talking about, not large capital K, Jesus. We have kings on this land who just seem to just drop down dead and no one likes to talk about it. We're on the island of Carter, and some of us have found out we have, I have a DNA that's connected to this land 275,000 years ago. Now that's hard for some to believe. Now those who've been indoctrinated by a state church that the earth is 6,000 years, that's the doctrine of the devil. The Attorney General is the, is the licensed preacher and he preaches doctrines <coughs> of devils. <coughs> Why? Because when the original, when the originals, golly gosh, men, we need to look up that, and the, the original noddies, black kings, stand, we're going to be attacked by the local church because they're going to say, you you can't have a DNA that old. Well, we do. And the Bible says, in the beginning, God created. He, first, Chapter 1, verse 1, all started off. Later on, he made, but he created a long, long time ago. Anyway, that's all I like to say at the moment. Bye for now. If I can look out to turn this off. I have a confession to make. I am that I am, and I am the preacher at the power of the church, that's what I am. <clears throat> I'd like you to, this was taped I think last year, or the year before, at my first Pirates church meeting where Pirates came along, it wasn't too many, <laughs> but my first sermon I'm going to let you listen to and I'll try to amuse you as we go along. Thank you. I can only play the audio because it was a not a secret secret meeting but it was just a gathering and some of the pirates didn't want their identity to be known and rightly so. The only difference between a pirate and a privateer. A privateer is someone who has been licensed to be a pirate, only to give his booty, or part of his booty, a tax, to the real pirate, a Regina. An E or I, he's riding, taking you for a ride, <laughs> and so forth. Sacks the uh, Gotha. But anyway, uh, I'm going to play uh, part of the recording that was given at a pirate's church on Carter Island, or some call it Island of the Dead. Some say it doesn't have a name. Some said it got, it got cold naughty recently. Some said the Freemasons took it in 1834. Who knows really at the end of the day. <laughs> but there's some good people on the island. So I've been told. <laughs> Well, hello, it's Alan Hamer, the fugitive on Carter, Kangaroo Island. Just thought I'd sing a little song. This stitched me up for the murder of Corey Rainey. Just Google Corey Rainey. And the Attorney General knows, and they all know. But anyway, we wait and see what happens next. We even had the Governor General here a couple of days ago. Mr. Governor Glenn Stevens, who I said, shame, shame, shame. For covering up murder and the loss of possibly 80 billion dollars. But anyway, apart from that, here we go. Jesus, 
shortly so I'm handing over a <coughs> kind of walkers totem uh, I was given to Carter on kind of walkers um, to act on his behalf and I'm going to be uh, giving that to White Eagle so he'll be the chief priest White Eagle on Carter I'm just going to sing a song before I have the banish till after Christmas but for now oh, maybe a song that goes on like <laughs> Gus Gars at that tune I've uh, recently found out that um, this will go down in history one day, that my DNA, my DNA, not who I say I am, but my DNA, for whatever reason, has come from a tribe called Hamer. H-A-M-E-R, which, for whatever reason, was on this land 275,000 years ago. I repeat, 275,000 years ago, the Hama tribe was here on this land. We're still establishing why they came here. I believe it was to catch up the, the star walkers, the, the special ones, the Abba originals, the pre-Adamites. Who knows, but I'm sure time will tell. But I have my DNA and it has confirmed over more than 275,000 years ago, a tribe known as Hama was here on this land. Now you say we came from Africa, from Ethiopia. I'm not sure. We could have come the other way, I'm not sure yet. For justice, and we stand for what is right. We hammer. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer justice in the morning and I'm in the evening all over this land so I'm Mr. Hammer and a fugitive and with a pending federal, federal warrant on the 8th of October I did from the information I got I made a video I am the King of England that's a claim I'm making no one's disproved it I told Quentin Bryce I've told Peter Cosgrove I've sold to the Attorney Generals I've told the Commissioner of Police I'm the King leave me alone and I did not kill Corey Rennie. Full stop. I don't care what you say. Nobody wants to talk to me. Why did I end up with my passports at her grave site? Well, I could talk to the attorney, I guess. They put it in there. But anyway, that's another issue. Thank you. It's the Emperor has no cause here. Jerry. I am a Christian man. That's all I can claim to be, really. And if I'm a Christian man, I have to be an honourable man. An honourable man is a man who speaks truth. At the end of the day, that's all we have left. I used to say that when we come into this world, we have nothing. Well, we do have something. We have a soul and a spirit. We live in a body. We have a body. People wouldn't conceive what a body is worth, <clears throat> but we have one. It's a gift. And when we leave this world, I used to say, we leave with nothing. Well, that's not entirely correct. I left this world in 2003, momentarily, so it seems. Whether I was dead or dreaming, I don't really know. But I was aware I was wrong. I had to change my thinking. <clears throat> I left with something, my memories. My memories were all with me. I knew who I was, and so forth. I've learnt and was given a gift of empathy in 2013, after fasting for 40 days and thinking about injustice. I empathised. I felt something. I felt compassionate. I felt charity. 
these are feelings that were quite strong. And um, and I guess I've learned, if you say something, you do what you say. If you don't, you're not honourable, you're in dishonour and disgrace. So I'd like to be honourable now and say, there's a lot of people out there who felt injustice. There's a lot of people out there who are suffering. There are a lot of people out there who sent, feel they're misunderstood. There's a lot of people out there who've been victimised. There's, there's a lot of people out there I'd like to talk to. Because we need a leader. And I'd like to put my hand up. I've challenged all those who need to be challenged. I have nothing to fear. I'm looking forward to going home. I'm only here for a small period of time. But while I am, I'm hoping to do something that will not be beneficial to myself, but for all generations to come. This was a huge billion dollar trust set up in my name, a charitable institution trust set up by Mr. Clive Stocks, who I believe Corey Rennie was aware of, and it may have been Corey that rang me before she was murdered. <clears throat> That's another story. But I believe it's time. It's time now. It's time. 